Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm here to introduce you to some of the most interesting and successful business people. I want you to learn their stories and what made them be who they are today. The insights and secrets to their success. I want you to have real business people getting real. In this series I call The Real Business Superpowers. Here to join us is Yan. He's a co-director of Big 3 video agency in Toronto. He's a visual storyteller, a video marketing expert, and a cinematographer. He is a video magician. Jan's primary goal is to produce works that change, educate, and inspire. Hi everyone, and welcome to my channel, where we're gonna be sharing the bits and bobs about businesses from business experts. Today, we have the amazing Jan. Jan is a visual storyteller, video marketing expert, and cinematographer. Using an extensive and ever-growing knowledge of film and technology, Jan's primary goal is to produce works that change, educate, and inspire. Jan and Natalia started in Toronto Big, uh, Big 3 Video Agency Inc., specializing in video production market and marketing. And now they're creating engaging online video content for fast-growing companies that are everything but boring. Welcome Jan for, to our channel. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for inviting me. I'm actually really excited to share some, some gold nuggets for your audience today. Yeah, hopefully our uh, audience will love it. I'm really sure they'll love it and I'm really excited. Thank you so much for being here all the Yay. way from Toronto, from Canada. Yes, That's... and I'm actually from Germany originally, so it's like I'm close, yeah. but also far. Yeah, exactly. You're kind of like <laughs> somewhere there. This is pretty amazing. Um, I want to start asking you a bit of your background. So I kind of want to know, um, or I want you to tell our audience, what made you start your video, video agency with Natalia? Actually, the story is quite interesting because we met in a pretty unconventional way. Okay. Where Natalia was working on this documentary project, which was all about people living unconventional lifestyles, mm -hmm. becoming digital nomads, uh, living off the grid. And uh, she was looking for people to collaborate on that project mm -hmm. and decided, how can I find some people in an unconventional way to help me with this project? So she reached out through Craigslist. Uh, she reached out through Couchsurfing, uh, which is this platform of people who love to travel. And um, usually you stay with another person on their couch. That's kind of before Airbnb was around. Yeah, I still love um, it though. <laughs> and it's all for free. Yeah. So she posted a post on the forum, on the filmmaking forum that I read, and I loved the description of the project and told her, I, I definitely want to see if I can become a part of it. But you didn't really say where in the world you're located, because Couchsurfing is an international forum. At that point, I was in Germany. Yeah. So when she said that she's based in Toronto, I actually was quite excited because I was flying there two weeks later. And That's the universe basically just yeah. brought us together. We met at a coffee shop right the week after I arrived, hit it off, realized that the project is really exciting for both of us. So we started collaborating on that. Uh, through that, learned that we align with a lot of our personal values mm. and then decided to start a business together um, based on the same values of like the unconventional lifestyles, yeah. the freedom, flexibility, fun, um, adventure all of that and uh, also having an impact because I also had a background in documentary filmmaking a bit. So we both wanted to create work that, that inspires people. Yeah, that's amazing. It's kind of like everything just got together without even having to plan it. Yeah, like one day Natalia asked me, hey, do you want to start a company together? And I said, yep, and that was it. <laughs> that's so cool. And I know a lot of our viewers, uh, they love the whole idea of having the business to be able to have more free time and uh, just basically be able to travel. I know I do and go all over the world and um, just be free and have uh, take that time in their hands. What were yeah. what were your biggest struggles? So you started you everything like got together. What what was your big what were your biggest struggles to start? Actually, the, yeah, there's there's two things that happened at the same time. One was something I was going through personally and one was that we went through in our business mm. and only like Recently, I realized that both of those things were very much connected. Um, when we started out our company, we thought we will be producing video commercials with big budgets and a big film crew and work with like bigger companies to create 
basically TV commercials, but just for online. Yeah. And we did that in the beginning for a little bit, but we realized that we're not really fulfilled by the work a lot. It's a big project usually also means there's a lot of people involved. It's much harder to organize. There's a lot of people who, whose opinions matter. Yeah. That even if you have a very creative project in the beginning, if everybody's opinion gets included and everybody gets their say at the end, it's not really what the vision was in the beginning. Yeah. So we got frustrated with that a bit as well. And there was one moment where we had a conversation with a big, big ad agency who um, basically, we, we asked them the question, hey, at what point does it stop becoming a struggle? Yeah. Like when uh, in the life of a business do things become easier and you're not just hustling to get like one client at a time? And also like, there was loads of bureaucracy, where, right? Yeah. Involved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that agency said that, that uh, CEO of the agency said it never stops and they've been in business since the 60s wow. meaning they've been over 50 years in business and still they're struggling all the time yeah. and we realized okay maybe we don't want to become this huge agency with a lot of people working because it also doesn't align with our value of the freedom and flexibility exactly yeah so uh, instead, we then decided, let's work with entrepreneurs, let's work, work with small business owners, let's start teaching more rather than just creating videos for people and empower them to create their own content. And that literally changed our business, like, uh, yeah, to, to like 180 degrees. We started working with um, small business owners and we met with them once a month, shot four videos, they released a video week on YouTube. Um, we started creating online courses, we started running workshops, and it just became so much more fulfilling, the work for us, to see the results that people are getting because of the work that they've done with us, rather than just doing like that one big project. Yeah. We now would basically help people create content and become thought leaders, become YouTube celebrities, and yeah, that, that really changed, um, like in the, it was only, it was after like two and a half years of doing one thing where we decided to change it. So that must, that, well, that takes, I, I think that's very brave because it's really hard, like, and that happens to a lot of uh, entrepreneurs. You start your company, you're like, yeah, I'm going to go big. But then you're like, well, actually, my initial goal was uh, something, something else. And kind of like changing from that to, you know what, I'm going to go back to what we wanted initially. That takes a lot of um, strength and you have to be very brave to be able to do that change. Yeah, but it's, I would say it's even harder to stick with something that doesn't work for you. Mm. Um, like for us, it was, it was almost like this epiphany once we found our people, like we found the, the clients that we really love to work with yeah. and that we're so invested in seeing them succeed rather than not being so attached to the outcome. Like it was, it was literally in the beginning we said, well, medium sized companies or bigger companies, they have bigger budgets and you want to make more money. Yeah. So we need to find bigger, like always find the bigger company. Yeah. Um, and once we change that to saying, well, we don't need to have a big company with one big project. We could have a small company that gives us 10 projects a year. Yeah. So the idea of uh, smaller videos and more series and YouTube content was, was something that, that helped us a lot transition. And why is it important? for a company. So now that you're talking about you changing your, mm -hmm. your, your angle and who your clients are going to be and who you want to help. What, why is it important for a business owner, for a company, for entrepreneurs to have uh, video content and what type of businesses need video content? Right. Um, we like to say that video is kind of like a virtual hug. It's I love um, that. <laughs> something, something that builds instant trust. Mm with your audience, mm -hmm. which uh, text or photos don't really do. Through yeah. video, you actually get to see somebody's personality. You get to know them. And like we, we all know that we buy from people that we know, like, and trust. Yes. So to me, video is just the fastest way to create connections with your audience that are not just words or um, like marketing language, but it's your personality that, that connects with them. And so basically what you're saying is that if you want a company to build trust, whatever company it is, they should show the personality through 
video content and that's good for everyone that has a company right yeah like i would say mainly if you have a service-based business mm -hmm. uh, where people work with you because of you not because yeah. of what you offer um, if you are a personal brand or if you do anything like coaching or online coaching or online programs that you teach mm -hmm. it's like with online programs it's so much about the teacher it's not about the content yeah. compared to school where if you don't like the teacher you wouldn't like the subject yeah online there's so many different people teaching the same thing so you get to choose who you want as a teacher yeah exactly and if you connect with your teacher then you're going to learn so much better yeah and like nowadays that you can do that you're like oh who do i want like do i go to you demi do i go to uh, a company do you like who do i want to get the information from yeah that it's uh a very important point but what about so you know like how like now a lot of people um they're taking on this whole approach of doing video but um so you have all these people doing facebook lives or um youtube mm -hmm. videos now i'm feeling slightly like i hope you're not, this is like my first video so i hope not, not to get very judged but <laughs> um mm -hmm. i'm very self-conscious now but what do you think about these people are doing now this Facebook live that they just go around and have, you know, they just with their phones and go around and have their videos. And sometimes the audio is not very clear. Um, the video might not like, they might not look as professional. Um, is, is it good because they're being authentic or what, what do you think? What's, what's your take on that? I think first of all, Facebook live is an amazing technology that now is available in everybody's hands. Mm. Like it's something that is so brand new. It, hasn't been around for that long so especially for like some of our clients that are really natural speakers yeah. that might not be very technical and don't want to edit videos it's a really great way to get their content out there and be consistent with it mm. like the biggest thing that makes you successful with creating videos versus not is the consistency and that's kind of how we change our business model too it's not just one video it's the consistency of maybe a video a week or a video a month. Like you have to stay, you have to keep creating new content and stay on top of people's minds. Mm. So if you're a very good natural speaker, just turning on your phone and delivering your message in a concise way and that not, that not, then not having to edit it is actually really cool. But like you said, on the other hand, mm. there's people who um, maybe are not natural speakers maybe they are rambling on a lot like the thing that frustrates me the most with facebook lives is when people just create really long videos mm. and it takes them maybe five minutes before they even say what the video is about and then the in the end the video is like 20 30 minutes long most people will not watch your video live but they will watch it in the replay mm. and if somebody doesn't tell me in like the first minute what this video is about I'm not going to stick around to watch it. Like Facebook is a place with a lot of distractions. So um, people's attention spans are really, really short. So you need to make sure you give them something that makes them stick around. So telling them what is the goal of the video or what's the topic of the video. And it must be something that is relevant to them and then actually giving them the information. So um, yeah, there's, there's, I guess, both both sides. Like, it's a really powerful tool, but you know how you have to do you it have correctly. You have to know how to use it well. But what about? Because yeah. I know that you guys do some some of this in your um in in one of your uh, online courses. So what about? Because the whole like branding, like how professional it looks, how you look on the camera, how you're dressed, uh, mm -hmm. all these things. Does that influence um when you're doing this Facebook Live and all this content that you're doing yourself? Does that influence or should you like just do it and that's it? Or this is something that people should be aware of? Yeah, I, I would say um, there is something that happens subconsciously when people watch your videos. We all make very like there's the idea of first impressions and we all make very quick judgments subconsciously without even being aware of it. And if your video looks like it's done by an amateur, then they associate you or your brand, your company with an amateur brand. And that might not always be the best way you want to market your business. Yeah. So if you invest into making your videos look a certain way by having good audio, by having good lighting and um, structuring your content in a way that is engaging and valuable to people, 
then that also sends a message. Yeah. It sends a message that you're organized, that you pay attention to details, that um, if you pay attention to your video, you might you will also pay attention to work, the work that you do for your clients. Yeah, exactly. So in any sort of content, even if it's with Facebook Live or YouTube Live or any sort of anything, this is these are things that we should be aware. And uh, what you're saying also with uh, being charismatic and connecting with the audience, if you want to sell, you need to be, uh, from what, for what I understand you're saying, you need to be very charismatic and uh, to be able to connect and people to like you, to be able to sell, right? Yeah, for us, um, the way we describe being charismatic on video is the opposite of being nervous and um, not confident mm -hmm. on video. Yeah. Because, again, people... I would say people's bullshit detectors online are really good. Like if somebody's not authentic, if they just pretend yeah. to be someone, like if they, uh, and I see this actually quite a bit, if people try to copy, uh, for example, Gary Vaynerchuk. Okay. Like his videos are pretty popular, especially if you work in, in marketing. And there's a lot of people out there that just copy his style, but it doesn't feel right there's something off it's just not their personality they're just copying somebody else so to to me charismatic means you're confident in what you're saying mm. and a lot of it is and you're the body language expert right a lot of it is, is not actually what you say but it's Honestly. how you say it and like the tone of voice that you're using the the way you stand and there's a lot of other things that go into it and is this something that you work with your clients? So when you when you take in a client, do you work through the whole like, okay, so you're, we're not going to be copying this other person. Let's try to get your authentic self. Is that something that you kind of go through with, with the people you work with? Yes, definitely. Like that's that's probably the, the most exciting part is figuring out, well, what is it that makes this video also different to everybody else? Mm. And a lot of times you don't have to find something really crazy you just have to figure out well what is it about me maybe about my experience my personality that is different than other people and one of our clients for example he is an insurance broker and um, wow. he's a father of three kids and we loved when we worked with him um, how he explains very complicated insurance issues in a very yeah. simple way and a lot of times he would like pick things up from like the 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 table and like use salt salt shakers and a pen and explain like with the things on the table of what the these insurance different insurance types are yeah um so we ended up creating these videos for him where he uses his daughter's barbie dolls to explain insurance and including him everybody thought this is the mo craziest idea and like nobody will take him seriously because he's an adult playing with dolls on camera. Yeah. Um, but the feedback he got was that from everybody that knew him, that's exactly who he is. Like if if he had those Barbie dolls on the desk, he probably would use them to explain insurance to you when he meets with you. Yeah. So we kind of just used that, and it became a thing that set him apart from a lot of other people. Yeah, and that is so clever because okay, so I I I don't think I would. I, I need the Barbie dolls or something like very graphic to, for, to be able to understand um, all these things. So, and ultimately you want to get the information out to your customers and you want it to be easy. So if you start talking in this like difficult jargon, they're not going to get it. So that sounds so mm -hmm. clever. That's very interesting. I, I want to watch that. <laughs> I really want to watch that. Yeah, they're all on YouTube. Oh, we can, po we can post the links uh, below as well if you want. Um, yeah, for sure. Okay, guys, so we're going to be posting some of those links as well as all the links uh, from Jan so you know that it's, everything is going to be in the comment section below. Um, I wanted to ask you about... So this is we're coming to the end of the, of the interview and I always like to end with three questions and then... And then I'm going to actually, guys, I'm going to share with you a little surprise that Jan have for you. Um, but I want to start asking you, what are you grateful for? Um, right now, I'm really grateful about the connections that I've made in the last two years. Um, I actually started talking about that a little bit in the beginning where we as a company figured out who is our audience. Yeah. I kind of figured out who are my people as well. It yeah. took, like I moved to Canada uh, almost 10 years ago, but it took me six years before I r realized um, how to make 
new friend new friendships like i was feeling kind of alone when i arrived in a new city yeah and it took me a long time to to find my people that um accept me for who i who i am mm. and that i can be comfortable being myself around so that that is something that i'm probably the most grateful for having found my tribe yeah i totally i totally get what you're saying because well i also so i come from a different country as well i come from venezuela and then mm -hmm. i moved to norway and then i moved to the uk and i've been here for roughly nine years and i think it also took me time to understand the, it's a very difficult different culture and it took me ages mm -hmm. to understand the culture and then actually find the people that i wanted to hang out with and something that happened to me was that um, which I think it's kind of the same thing that you're saying. Um, once I found out exactly what I wanted to do in terms of, okay, so I don't want to take, like do this for all this, uh, cost, uh, clients. I want to, uh, this is the type of things I want to do. I want to keep it myself. I want to, um, have very clear what I wanted and what my goals were. Then the people just started gravitating towards me. And then I found amazing people and I couldn't be happier with the with the people that I found and it's it's it, it was it took a while so yeah I, actually I, I will show you one thing I have this thing on my this sticker on my laptop yeah let's see if I can if I can show that uh, that kind of sums up exactly that I don't your know if vibe attracts your tribe I love that that is true yeah that that's how I realized that if you're just confident and comfortable with knowing who you are and put that out there like the the big scary thing is putting that out there yeah um then the right people will find you yeah yeah that is true oh i love that i absolutely love that where do you see yourself in the next five years that was a difficult question for me to answer because i don't a lot of times think of time is something like five years is very abstract for me okay we um, we like to change so, it so, sorry go well well so just thinking about future like there's one thing that i would love to see that is kind of part of my vision mm. which is um i started out in the beginning wanting to become a documentary filmmaker yeah. because i wanted to have that impact and um, inspire people and now we kind of moved our business and also me personally much more into empowering change makers yeah. to connect with their audiences so i'm hoping that in the future rather than me working on one project and putting that out there there will be all these people that we've touched and worked with that put their projects out there and the impact will be so much bigger than what i could do by myself oh i love that okay and i'm sure it will because well We'll put the links below later and we'll talk uh, a little bit more about that later but at the end. But uh, they have all this in content on their Facebook, on their website, and they have all these amazing courses. And both of them, Jan and Natalia, are so funny and amazing. And I don't know, I love, I love the videos. And also I love the colors of the video. I don't know why, I love it. <laughs> um, lastly, uh, before we go into the surprise, what is the last piece of advice for anyone that's starting a new company or they're thinking they have that's starting a new company they have a company or they're thinking to start one um the biggest lesson one of the biggest lessons that we've learned was you have to talk to people more mm -hmm. you need to talk to people even before you start a company or before you create a product yeah like for us it was especially thinking about creating an online course the more you talk to your audience, the more you talk to people who are interested and figure out what are their goals and their dreams, what are the obstacles in their way, and then all you need to do is create the thing that gets them closer from where they're at now and where they're stuck to where they want to be. Yeah. And um, instead of creating something that you think people will use and then you put it out there and there's crickets. So. Yeah. The more you can have these conversations before you even create something, the better. And the other side effect of it is you'll connect with those people through those phone calls because the more you ask people questions, the more they feel heard, which is kind of paradox. But the more people talk about themselves, the more they feel understood. Yeah. So the more questions you ask, the more connected they feel. And just through those interviews, you might actually find your first few customers as well. Yeah, that's true. And if you, 
what you're saying that if you if you, if you do something just for yourself um you might take it out there and it's nothing as if you have a goal uh you can modify it in a way that actually will reach people rather than just nothing will happen that is a great advice yeah um, so guys, uh, I want to talk about a little bit about some uh, surprises that Yang have for you. So they're offering, I'm going to let you talk more about it. I'm just going to give like a little brief information, sure. but they have a masterclass that is for free. Um, I'm going to post the link below. And also they have a online course, uh, about powerful, the powerful video formula. And he was kind enough to give us $200 off with the code B origami. So do you want to tell us a bit more about those courses? Sure. So the masterclass is all about creating videos that sell. Mm -hmm. And like I was touching a little bit before, there's the subconscious messages that you might be sending to your audience yeah. without even knowing mm -hmm. uh, when you're on video. So we put together, uh, we actually in the masterclass talk about our powerful video formula, which are the five elements that you need, that your videos need to have so they can actually sell. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, I don't want to list them all because I don't want to take away the surprise, yeah. but we talk about all these five things like being authentic and, and finding your own signature style and being charismatic, what we kind of touched on today through the example of our client Jane, who has taken our course and is doing videos every week, like she's doing a one, two minute video and just post it on her Facebook fan page and puts a little bit of uh, money behind it for Facebook ads and she's been invited on breakfast television several times, wow. had radio interviews, has even become the spokesperson of a product that she promotes as part of her nutrition business wow. um, and creating videos for that company. Um, I think she was just shooting again for them last week. So she's seen her business grow a lot by just investing, I don't know, an hour every week creating a short little video. Is she the so lady? Explain a bit more about that. Is she the lady that does the before and after and the after start with some apps? Is that her? Um, I'm not sure. Okay, doesn't matter because she... I, I was looking through your through your through your clients. <laughs> I was I was a bit of a <laughs> Facebook stalking there, <laughs> so. Yeah, she she also loves to use props. So yeah. the same way the insurance broker used the Barbie dolls, she loves to use props, and she's a nutritionist, so her props. One of her most popular videos is the different types of poo. So she has, if your poo looks like this, then you're probably dehydrated. If your poo looks like this, then I don't know, uh, something else is wrong. And if your poo looks like this, then you're perfectly healthy. Yeah, so you guys have to check the masterclass so you can see all those very interesting examples and um, yeah, get all that information. That's extremely important. What about the online course? And the online course is pretty much the complete guide to get started with videos. So if you've been thinking about how to use videos for your business mm -hmm. and you're not sure how to get started, yeah. um, in there we basically take you from beginning of what content should your videos be about? How do you structure that content? Uh, there's a video production crash course where we show you how to put together a home studio. Wow. Actually, you might see there's a little black backdrop that I have up here and I see you're sitting in front of a backdrop I am, yeah. that I can just pull down <laughs> yeah. um, and shoot my videos in front. Um, there is some body language tips and how to use your voice, how to use gestures and um, everything basically how to edit your videos like basically beginning to end and we just finished a master class a second master class that is part of the course all about how to create profitable Facebook video ads wow. so if you think about um, promoting your business on Facebook mm -hmm. with videos then that master class takes you exactly step by step with like tutorials uh, and screen shares through the process of how we created the Facebook ads that work for us I actually have to uh, say that, so my backdrop is generally white, but because I'm so in love with the colors that you use in your, I, in your videos, I couldn't find anything yellow because I see you do a lot of like beautiful contrast with colors. So I was like, I'm going to get this backdrop um, and see how it goes. <laughs> so this is just because of you, because I generally use the white one. Yay. <laughs> yeah, because I'm like, you guys, so I still like, I'm still working on my, on my studio. Um, I do see the difference between like how your videos look like and how my starting videos look like it's a massive difference and um, I can't wait to be able to do the course actually because I I need it and I'm sure a lot of you guys can benefit from it as well these guys are amazing um, 
check them out. All the links are going to be below. Their videos are great. I can't say enough that I love the colors, like the colors. And, um, and them, they're so amazing. And so just check them out. All the information is going to be below, including the codes and the masterclass and the online course and the, um, um, yeah, all the links. So take a look uh, and check them out because they're really, really cool. And we're, um, we're at our, our ugh, I got a tongue twisted. We're at the end of our, oh, sorry. We're at the end of the video. I, I'll, huh? I'll, I'll, sh I'll share one more thing yeah, just because that happened. Um, the biggest thing that holds people back from being on video is because they think that it has to be perfect. Mm -hmm. And I think anybody who just saw you stumble will connect you with you more rather than if you did everything perfectly. Like nobody wants to see the the people who everything works out for yeah everybody wants to see oh they're just like me yeah exactly and that's how we'll connect right yeah that is true and also the whole thing about getting started getting everything perfect that happened to me i was like oh i've been wanting to do these videos for a long time but i was putting it off because like i don't have the lighting i don't have the this i don't have i was like you know what i'm gonna get started because otherwise nothing's gonna happen and then as i go along i'll build everything that i need and so, yeah, and so I started. So, guys, get, exactly. get started. Okay, thank you so much for being here, Jan. Really, really amazing interview. I hope you, you enjoyed it as well. Um, and you had fun. Yeah, this was fun. I had loads of fun. Thank you. Um, and guys, again, check the, the links below and give us a thumbs up. Follow us uh, so we can make more videos. If you have any comments of other type of information that you would like to to see um just let us know and we'll try to invite uh, an expert on the subject and i'll see you guys later um you want to say bye <laughs> let's say bye sure <laughs> bye, bye people <laughs> like bye bye everyone thank you so much for watching thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe to our channel we'll be posting videos like this every week and follow us on twitter at behavior hacker we are beorigami at beorigami.com